All right, so it's been about six months now since I bought this horse trailer, and the main reason I purchased this trailer is to use it for moving all our stuff out of this house and move into the next house, because I don't really want to pay any movers if I don't have to. So main purpose, again, is for moving our stuff. Secondly, it kind of made sense, because I'd like to have horses again someday, and if I could just use this as a horse trailer in the future, it all makes sense. And finally, the main, well, Another reason why I decided to go with this trailer over like a modern cargo trailer. This is an all steel trailer. It's built to last. You know, I, I look at the modern day cargo trailers and you, they're just so cheaply made. I mean, everything's made like a camper, which I mean, they'll, they'll last a while, don't get me wrong. But I mean, if you take care of an all steel trailer and make sure it doesn't rust out on anything like that, the trailer's gonna last a lifetime, no problem. So. Today there's a couple things I gotta do to get this trailer ready to get us moved out. Walking in here, this trailer smells like horses. I wonder why. But anyway, first things first, this is a three horse slant load trailer, meaning that you can fit three horses in here and when they load, they stand slanted as opposed to some trailers are called straight load trailers in which the horses are parallel to the truck and trailer. Now I want to put as much furniture in here as possible. Initially I was thinking that I was going to keep these dividers in here to kind of section off the furniture but I think it'd be best if I just remove these out of here. But anyway, how these dividers work, you load in the first horse, you push in this little tab here, and this divider gets locked in the side here. So you have one horse up there, Second horse here, and third horse in the back. Pretty self-explanatory. The only thing is, I don't think these dividers have been removed in the life of the trailer, so pins are probably going to have some wear, so it'll be fun trying to take these off. So whoever designed this trailer was actually pretty intelligent. They probably thought that somebody may want to use this as a cargo trailer one day. So they actually designed these dividers to be removed pretty easily. So there's simply a pin that pops out here. But again, there's probably some wear in that pin. I'm going to have to get a chisel to pop that out of there. Then on top, just have a half pin barrel hinge. So after I take that bottom pin out, I should be able to lift up this divider and get it right out of here. That was a little bit more challenging than I had anticipated. I know you can't tell on camera, but each of these dividers probably weighs around 100 pounds or so. 
you got to think they got to be able to contain an animal that can be well over a thousand pounds. Let's face it, I'm not the biggest guy here. So, anyway, it's out of the way. I know I'm going to get somebody in the comments section saying, well, if you're taking the trailer down there, why don't you just leave the dividers in there and offload them at the new house? Well, yeah, I mean, certainly that would make sense to a degree. However, I plan to move these later on when I move all my shop stuff. First thing that is going to be moving down there is furniture, which is a bit more fragile. And by removing these out of the way, I can efficiently pack the trailer and pack it tight, especially because I have some time to pack it up now until closing, obviously. So having these dividers out of the way allows me to increase my packaging efficiency. So it's kind of like a game of Tetris in the trailer, which is going to be fun. And also, it's what I want to do. Sorry, haters. Yeah, I'm definitely liking this a lot better, having those dividers out of here. Now it really feels like a cargo trailer, with the downfall of there just being a three-foot passageway that i got to sneak everything through because there's only one door for the horses in the back. Over here is a section for a saddle rack, which it just swings out and horse people stuff, so that's a downfall. But another advantage of having a horse trailer is I look around in this cargo compartment area and there's plenty of bomb-proof anchors, like right here. There's hooks all along the side there to uh, attach your horse to, so when I put all the furniture in here and put the moving mats on everything, I can just strap everything down and keep it nice and secure, so we minimize the chances of having any collateral damage. Now the next thing I'm going to do is move into the forward compartment of the trailer, and there's one or two small things that I want to do up there. So as mentioned earlier on in this video, I mentioned two or three of the reasons why I bought this trailer. One, to use it as a cargo trailer. Two, to use it as a horse trailer. And three, it's just well constructed and I think I'm always going to have really good resale value because of that. Now, here's a fourth thing. I'm not sure if it's legal or not, but you could actually, in theory, use this trailer as a bit of a camper. It's kind of like wasted space, so the trailer manufacturers decided to make this compartment up here, which is perfect for throwing a mattress up there, or in my case, for the move, I'm going to throw a bunch of boxes up here. And here's the downfall. There's nothing stopping the boxes from falling off this steep ledge, and to get up there, you gotta, you got to get a little bit of a head start, but it can be done, and really, there's a lot of room up here. Pretty comfortable. Well, not really. With the mattress, it would be a lot more comfortable, but my goal right now is to create a way to prevent boxes from sliding off this bed portion of the trailer off this probably three or four foot cliff. So what I'm planning on doing is simply drilling a hole here, drilling a hole here, and I could either buy cargo netting, but what I plan to do is simply just put a rat strap from here to here, and that should prevent it from coming over this cliff. One thing I do gotta be careful of is that boxes don't slam into the window, but I mean, this car this is carpet up here and there's a bit of friction, so I don't think the boxes are really gonna, you know, slide around and, you know, break the glass. So I think I'm gonna be safe there. Perhaps I'll only allow for cardboard boxes with lightweight items up here, but there's a lot of place to put stuff in this trailer and this is a great trailer for doing what I'm doing. that's going to serve its purpose just fine. Alright, so I got the dividers out. I've drilled in the angle in the loft section of the trailer to install that ratchet strap to prevent boxes from falling off that loft. Now the only thing to do now is start moving boxes in there and really pack it in there tight because I want to take as few trips as possible. Now, the only reason I haven't been putting stuff in the trailer is because I haven't had a way to secure the trailer. No locks on it. 
So I ordered up some locks. Now, there's a lot of locks out there. I, you know, I'm not sponsored by Master Lock, but you know, Master Lock is just kind of like the name brand. Now they have off-brand Chinese locks, but just looking at some of the reviews on Amazon, you know, somebody purchased locks that look very similar to this, and you know, they only lasted a couple months because they just rusted out. These locks are constructed with stainless steel, and they come with a lifetime guarantee, which is great. You know, they're weather resistant. They score an eight out of ten when it comes to their security rating, but I mean, let's face it, locks are kind of like an honest man's deterrent. If anybody wanted to cut through these locks, it'd take two seconds with a battery-operated cutoff wheel angle grinder to cut through these, so again, they're an honest man's deterrent. Now, this trailer has four doors, three of which are the tractor-trailer style swing-open doors, which have that latch, or kind of like a landscape-style latch, where I could use a simple lock like this, so at least for one extra. I'll show you where the fourth one's going to go in a minute. And the other door has an RV latch style handle. When I bought the trailer, it never came with any keys, so stay tuned for an upcoming video where I'm gonna replace that because I don't have that latch today. But anyway, let's get the trailer secured. And on a quick side note, shame on you, Master Lock, for giving me four locks, but only giving me two keys. It would cost like another five cents to give me two more keys. Come on. Turning our attention to the hitch mechanism on the trailer, lock number four was initially intended to lock the ball lock to prevent people from stealing the trailer. I made a miscalculation. The lock is too small to go through the hole, which is the ball lock. So I had to get a little bit creative. What I did, I took the safety chain that runs off the top of the hitch here. I ran it through this locking handle and then I short chained the chain and locked the chain back onto itself therefore preventing this locking handle from locking the ball lock. So what that means is basically somebody still could back underneath this and have their ball go up into the hitch. However, they can't lock the ball on the hitch. So if they want to steal this thing, they're going down the road kind of fast and they hit a bump. This could literally pop right off the ball, hit the walls of their tailgate, slam into the back of their truck, or even worse, kill somebody. So. I know thieves aren't that smart, but hopefully this will just deter them a little bit more. I don't know why you'd want to steal a trailer like this. Well, maybe because I talked this thing up so much, so I got an eye on you subscribers out there. Real quick before I conclude this video, this is the fourth door that I was referring to that has this RV style latch, which I had the new one ordered. It hasn't come yet. As mentioned earlier in the video, I don't have keys for this one. In my opinion, it's much cheaper just to replace this. It costs about 35 bucks shipped to the door as opposed to going out to a locksmith and having them attempt to rekey this. This isn't built so that you can replace the cylinder. Trust me, I've already tried. Everything's riveted and it, they, they don't make it easy to replace the cylinder. So it's just easier to you know, buy a $35 new latch. Again, that'll be in a future video. So now I'm gonna start throwing some boxes in the trailer. Stay tuned for updates on this move and what the new house and shop is going to look like. Thanks for watching.